Hey guys, welcome back to another video today. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Now today, what I'm gonna be doing, thanks to Kyle from Bitwit, is looking at a pre-built PC and then comparing it to a PC you could build yourself. Now, the reason I love this idea is because most pre-builts are gonna be generally a lot worse value than a PC you could build yourself. The reason for this is because those companies that assemble the pre-built PCs need to make a profit on the parts they order and therefore will price them a little bit higher than usual. There's also usually gonna be a slight build fee included in the price because, well, they need to pay their workers. Now, I did say most pre-builts are gonna be a horrible value, but there's actually a few that are worth checking out. For example, companies like NZXT and Corsair can use their own parts because they have so many of them in their PC builds, so those parts only cost the manufacturing price to use and therefore are cheaper. Another thing you should know is that companies tend to cut corners when it comes to parts like RAM, motherboards, and power supplies, and when building your own PC, you can pick parts with much more quality and still squeeze it into the same budget as a pre-built. But basically today, I've picked a pre-built PC on Newegg for around $1,000, and I'm gonna be comparing it to my own PC part picker list for around the same price. The purpose of this is to see how much better you could build your own PC rather than buying a pre-built. So we're gonna go ahead and hop on Newegg alongside the PC part picker list I've assembled, and let's begin the comparison. All right, so you can see this is the pre-built PC I've picked. It's $900. $70 on Newegg and we're gonna go ahead and just compare it to my PC part picker list I've made that honestly spoiler alert is a lot better than the pre-bill already so we're gonna go ahead and start with the CPU. So for the pre-built, it's rocking the Core i5-9400F. Now this is a pretty good CPU in terms of budget from Intel because usually their parts are gonna be a little higher priced than their Ryzen counterparts but the 9400F kind of changes that. I would say it probably does perform a little better in games than the Ryzen 5 3600. I haven't done my research on that, but I'm assuming it does because it's Intel. But for around $200, it's also a pretty good mid-range CPU. So hopping over to our PC part picker list, the CPU I've chosen is the Ryzen 5 3600. Now, I already mentioned this, but it's probably gonna be a little bit less performance than the 9400F. However, I think it's probably a better mid-range CPU, and I think the graphics card we picked in this build will make up the extra frames. You can also see the 9400F is 2.9 gigahertz, while the 3600 is 3.6. But they are both six core processors. If I'm not wrong, the 9400F is six threads as well, and the 3600 is 12 threads. All right, moving on to CPU cooler, and we're not gonna spend much time on this because in our pre-bill, it's just the Intel stock cooler, which is a lot worse than the Ryzen stock cooler, which is what we're using on our PC part picker system, because as you can see, I haven't chosen a CPU cooler, so I was just thinking of using the Ryzen Wraith Stealth cooler, I believe, that comes with the 3600. Next, moving on to motherboard, you can see, I'm not sure if it will tell us the exact motherboard in this, but it is an Intel B360 chipset, which is a little bit older and obviously going to be a lot cheaper, which is one of the places I mentioned pre-built companies will tend to cut corners because you can buy some pretty cheap motherboards, but obviously they're not going to have the overclocking support and anything, any other feature like M.2 slots or anything like that, that the motherboard you could buy would have. So I'm going to try and find exactly what motherboard this is, but chances are it won't tell us because it's obviously not a very good one. Let's see if I can try and see the motherboard in the pictures here. Yeah, okay, so that is a big no-no. It has two RAM slots, and generally, if you want to upgrade your PC at all, you're gonna wanna probably start with just four RAM slots, because that's such a basic feature that so many motherboards lack. Another thing about this motherboard is that it's not showing the I.O. in any of the pictures, so I'm a little bit concerned there's probably not many USB slots or maybe no ethernet or something like that. So it looks like the motherboard has two USB 2.0 and actually two USB 3.2 gen 1 which those are like pretty much the best USB ports you can get although there's only two of them and four total which is nothing. My motherboard is a cheap gigabyte motherboard and it has six. So obviously this is the first spot where our pre-built has already cut corners. So the motherboard I've gone with on the PC part picker list is the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max and the reason I've gone with this is because for our budget of $970, there's really no better value motherboard than this one. It comes with decent overclocking support, I believe 
two M.2 slots, although it might be one, and the rear I.O. isn't bad. All right, moving on to RAM or memory. This is where the Asus pre-built is just going to get worse and worse. So it looks like for memory, we have eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and I looked everywhere. I even asked a question on the Newegg Q&A about what speed the memory was, and it just does not say it anywhere. There's no Q&A questions about it. So I'm going to assume that it's DDR4 2400 speed, which is just so slow. It's it's not that slow, but it's the bare minimum, I'm pretty sure, for DDR4. You can see on our, on our pre-built system, we got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 with a cast latency of 16, which is... I'm assuming a lot better than this memory. And this is also double the RAM on our PC part picker list than the pre-built. So like I was saying, the pre-built is just pretty much going downhill with its specs right now. I would also say that eight gigabytes in 2020 is just really not gonna cut it. And I would definitely recommend upgrading from this. However, with their cheap little motherboard, there's only two RAM slots. So unfortunately you are stuck with those eight gigs unless you wanna buy a whole nother kit instead of just another eight gig kit to make 16. So pretty much if you wanna upgrade and I would definitely recommend upgrading, well actually I wouldn't recommend buying the system, but if you were gonna buy the system and upgrade, you really can't. You're gonna have to buy a whole nother kit of 16 gigabytes, which I mean, it's good RAM prices have gone down a lot since last year, but it's still a lot of extra money to spend and it would make this PC another $80. Moving on to storage, our pre-built here has a 512 gigabyte SSD. It is going to be a cheap SSD, which in most cases are going to be okay. I have a pretty cheap SSD in my PC. However, another thing you're going to notice is that there's no hard drive. So although it is fast storage, you're going to be stuck with a 512 gigabyte SSD and nothing else. So all your files, everything like that is just going to be probably filled up within, especially if you're a gamer, within, I don't know, a year or less. On my PC, in just over a year, I've already filled up way past 512 gigabytes. So if I had this, it wouldn't be lasting me a while. You could get a hard drive. I would recommend a two terabyte hard drive, but that's just again, going to make the PC $50 more. So you can see for our PC part picker list, we do have a 512 gigabyte SSD, same as the pre-built. However, we one up the pre-built with a two terabyte hard drive. Like I recommended, it's only an extra $51 right now. So for any like files that you don't use too much or games you don't use too much, you can put them on your hard drive and save a lot of space on that SSD. Moving on to the graphics card, which is probably going to be the most important component in in terms of gaming. You can see our pre-built, it doesn't have a bad graphics card, it is a GTX 1660, which is okay. I mean, I think for $970, you can definitely do better. It looks like the graphics card has one DVI, one HDMI, and one display port. So yeah, obviously it's gonna be a super cheap card. And then also I noticed on the pictures, there's like this, I don't know what you call that, like a GPU shroud, I guess, but it goes all the way the length of the PC horizontal, which kind of looks weird. I don't know why they have that in there. I don't know if it's blocking cables or what, but it doesn't look too good. Well, I guess clearly it's not blocking cables because they're just sticking out everywhere. And for our PC part picker list, you can see I have the MSI Radeon RX 5700 XT, which is probably going to get like almost double the performance of the 1660, especially this little cheap one here. But the 5700 XT is just a really, really good card overall, especially for the price. They do have the same uh, amount of onboard memory. However, the 5700 XT is just going to outperform the 1660 by a long shot, like a lot. And for the power supply on the pre-built, obviously it's not going to tell us which power supply it is. However, this one on the pre-built is 500 watts, which is less than my PC power picker list, but it is an 80 plus gold rated power supply, which is pretty good efficiency, better than 80 plus bronze. And although there are ketchup and mustard cables, I would assume that the power supply might be a name brand power supply, but the fact that it's not telling us kind of tells me otherwise. And for our PC part picker list, we have the Seasonic S12 uh, three, 550 watt, 80 plus bronze certified. But I did pick this because it doesn't have ketchup and mustard cables. It's 550 watts. It's Seasonic, which is a name brand. It's 80 plus bronze, which is fine certification. Even 80 plus might be okay here. So really the only thing that the pre-built power supply is gonna up mine that I chose in is with the certification, which I would say really doesn't matter too much because we have 80 plus bronze. They have 80 plus gold. There's not a big 
difference between those. But with our power supply that we chose, we have more watts, we have a better brand, and no ketchup and mustard cables, which is always a positive for your eyes. All right, moving on to the case. You can see for our pre-built, because it is an Asus pre-built, we have an ROG case from the looks of it. Now, honestly, I don't really like the looks of this case at all because it's like kind of silver and black. Although it does have RGB, I just don't think it looks good and I would not buy this case. Also, by the looks of it, it only comes with one intake fan over here as of this angle i can't see any fans over here and there are no angles that tell me there are fans over there so i would assume that there's just that one outtake fan which is good because well i guess it's not good but there's not really any ventilation for the fans if there were any to suck in and pull through the pc anyway because there's these little tiny gaps it looks like but i'm really not sure how any fans would be able to pull in an acceptable amount of air through those little ventilation lines. And you can see for our PC part picker list, we have gone with the NCXT H510. And I would probably go as far as saying, this is the best case for $70, just because of the features like the power supply shroud, um, the looks, I would say that's a feature, but it also comes with two fans instead of one, which is also another positive. So now that we're all done with this, you can see our PC part picker list comes out to 968.91 which is a little more than a dollar cheaper than our 969.99 pre-built PC. And as you can see, it also will perform a lot better. However, there are a couple things I wanna mention. With the pre-built, it is gonna come with Windows 10 Home, which is a plus. However, you can get a Windows 10 Home key for something like $12 on SCD keys. And Windows sells their keys to companies that build PCs for an extreme discount. So it probably also costs them $12 to get Windows on this. I'm not sure though. This specific pre-built is also gonna come with a USB keyboard and mouse. Granted, they are horrible. So I would not recommend getting a PC with a keyboard and mouse included because it's just gonna make the price go up and the performance go down. Well, the performance won't go down, but it's gonna cost more for the same performance that it would without the keyboard and mouse. I would definitely recommend like buying your own mechanical keyboard and your own mouse because they are gonna be your choice instead of your pre-built company's choice. And I think you're gonna have a lot more fun with a better keyboard and a better mouse. This pre-built is gonna come with a warranty, which is good. However, it's only a one year warranty. And like I mentioned earlier, you're definitely gonna have your PC for more than a year. So with your one year warranty, you're gonna be warranty -less for a while after that one year. All right guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the performance gap between this pre-built PC and and the PC part picker list for the exact same price. Again, thanks to Kyle from Bitwit for this awesome idea. However, I did wanna show you guys that instead of caving in and buying a pre-built, either cause you were afraid to build your own or you didn't know how, it's definitely worth it to build your own. If you guys did enjoy the video, a sub and a like would be massively appreciated. And after subscribing, feel free to turn on all notifications for the channel so you can just watch my videos sooner. Anyway guys, that's it for this one and I'll catch you guys in the next one.